All right, uh, we've been working on the cradle here for the 4602. This is a bronze casting I mentioned before. I got the pocket machine. Everything's machined, and now I'm putting the holes in to mount it. Got to put a hole here for the brake hanger. I got to eventually mount up. You can't see it here in the picture, but there's heart rockers. We'll get to that later. Got the hole for this. Got to drill four holes for the pocket here to mount the coupler pocket. Or the 12 bar pocket, and then I need two holes in the back here to uh, use for when you move it from place to place in the truck. You put an angle plate here, and that runs it, uh, that moves it. Now, these guys with all these bungee cords and nonsense and sky hooks and everything else. Uh, when we get to that point, I'll show you what I do, and it's worked me, for me for years. Had some criticism about it, which we'll get to, but in any event. Right now I'm putting the holes in. Now what I've done is I put this in place, got it all lined up in the locomotive, and I transfer punched six of the holes, the only six I can get at, which are the first six here, and I'll show you here in this, right here, these, these six here, right here. Now I'm going to do the others. What I'll do is pick up these, and then they're exactly three quarters apart, and five eighths I think this way, and uh, they're pretty good because I did them. So I know that they're right, and uh, uh, I used the, I didn't have a readout, then I dialed them in. But anyway, I'm going to put the holes in here. Now, these are tapped in this aluminum piece, and that's the way they originally were, and that's what it called for in a plan. But I'm doing something different because of the situation. I'm going to use these here, 1032. Cap screws. And I'm going to come up in from here. In from here and then put it into the, that might be too long, uh, and bolt it in from this side with a, with a, with nuts on the outside. Now, if they're too long, I'll machine them off so they're all the same height on the outside. But uh, I figured I'd get long enough, I can machine them off easy enough, cut them off. No biggie. And uh, we're going to have to spot face on this surface down here because it's tapered. It's got a taper to it so it pulls out of the mold. And in order to do that, I'm going to use what's called the reverse spot face tool. Now, I call it Eclipse Cutter because that's the company that made it. But this is the, uh, the shaft for it, and this is the cutter for it here, a little small cutter. And what happens is you put this in a chuck, put this through the hole, then hook this to it. You put this through the hole, and you hook this on here like this. So it finds a hole, and then when it when it turns, you see, oh, it's not supposed to fall off. There, and when it starts to turn against there, it, it locks itself in, and you bring it up, and that counterbore is from the inside. It's an inside counterbore, reverse counterbore, whatever you want to call it. That's what it is. And we're going to use that on all the holes. Um, I had to put it up on a one, two, three block. One, two, three block. Well, what is a one, two, three block? I got eight of them. Here they are. They're all match set eight. Here's one here. Why do they call it a one, two, three block? It's real simple. One, two, three. All right? So that's a one, two, three block. And it's got tapped holes in it. It's precision ground. And uh, they use these for a setup and things like that, like a parallel on a grinder and anything to set it up. I had to put it up on that because uh, the handle here did not clear this piece. So I'm up on that, and I indicated it here with the, with the indicator, the last word indicator along there. I set it up first with, the, with this against the flat edge across the, th across the bottom here and clamped it down. you got to put two clamps so it don't move around too much, and I indicated it. Well, now it's set up pretty good, so I'm going to take this off. And keep it out of the way, and I need it for the other side, so I'll do one side at a time. Now, what we do is, uh, I can get it in there. One side at a time, I'll center drill it, drill it, counterbore it, do this piece at the same time. That's done. Then flip it over to the other side. So, you got to center drill it, drill it, counterbore it from the back, and center drill, and drill, and tap and counterbore this for a screw to hold the brake rigging. That's all that does. So, okay. 
Now, next step, I got six holes on the top here, one, two, three, four, five, six, that are, that are uh, marked, transferred from the other, from the locomotive. I'll pick one of those up, and that'll be my corner right there, and I'll go from there. Every three-quarters of an inch, every five-eighths this way. I think that's what I got it written out. I made a little drawing of it. Uh, it's five nine sixteenths between centers. And it should be approximately three quarters this way and five sixteenths that way. So let's double check that to make sure. Should be three quarters this way. Right, can't see. Yep, and five sixteenths this way. Yep, it's right on. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to pick that one up right there and start from that. Now, how do you pick that up? Well, I'll show you. I'm going to lower the table a little bit. And we can use two, three things, two different things. I'm going to use the wiggler, which is like an obstacle course. All right, this is the wiggler, see? When it goes around, it's going to go like that. So as you bring that straight, then you can pick it up. Pick it up the center, and that's your point. There's other ways to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right, now you take it, you take something like this here, and you just t get it close, and you keep working it in. So it's running through. Right there. Okay. Now. Come over here. The heck was that? Oh. There. Hey, yes. Yeah, yeah. I know. You got a better idea. I've been doing this for years, pal. Trying to pick it up as best I can. That's pretty good. All right, now, read out. You can see that over here? Get it on number one. And you zero everything out. That's zero. Now somebody will say, somebody will say out there in the comments, they'll say, your, your milling machine needs a new bearing. I know that. Leave it alone. I'm here to tell you how to do this. Forget about the bearing. Don't be a wise guy and try to tell me about the bearing. I already know about it. Get around to it, I'll fix it. Otherwise it works pretty good. Get this out of here. All right. Go back for now. And now we got to get a, a chuck. Uh, 
Okay. Now we're going to center drill and drill. Now somewhere along the line here, we're going to have to get a long center drill to do the. I hate to use this thing so long. Here's a shorter one. Might as well use the whole thing. Around zero. Now what you want to do, if you can, you drill it down deep enough so it chamfers it. And drop this down a little bit. All right, now I'm going to go out of the way for a second to check it. Come back. Check it with a screw. I don't know. Check it with something else. No, a little bit more. Back to zero. There, it's close enough for zero. Check it again. Okay, that's chamfered now. Alright, now we're going to come back to zero. Come past it. That is zero. Now we're going to go 562. Good. That's going to be right there. It is. Okay. Now we're going to go 562. 962, 916 is an inch and an eighth, I believe. So we're going to go to inch and an eighth. One, 17, 25. Right there. Close enough. Okay. All right, now we're going to move this way three quarter. Down here. 750. I did this with just dials. Their 750 is going to be right there. It's pretty close. Probably going to wind up having to drill them out. 562. Zero. Zero. Okay. Now we got to go this way, three quarters of an inch. So that'd be an inch and a half. Okay. 